Morning hours, as usual, busy for Sheila preparing lunch and breakfast, then packing and making ready her only daughter, Neela, for her school. Sheila was in the bathroom, her mind filled with today's task. Her mind was rewinding. Why this hell? Who is responsible for her today's situation? Whose fault? Not her parents. They raised her in good environment. Pampering was the parents' priority task. When she went college, she was provided with latest two-wheeler, purse full of currencies to spend. Being the only daughter to her parents, her enjoyment was not stalled on any day and any moment. She is supposed to complete her final degree exams, and she was preparing as well, though she will pass out in flying color. That Friday was her fateful day, which she didn't realize on that day. She was speeding in her scooter to the college to complete her final exams. While she turned to the main road from the lane of her house, suddenly one young man waved her for a lift. She was thrilled till now nobody had asked her for a lift. She stopped, and he pleaded her to drop him in a hospital on her way to college. She also obliged and dropped him at the place he wanted to get down. After getting down, he was in a hurry, waved his hand, thanked her, and entered into the hospital gate. In a hurry, he took a visiting card and gave it to her. She kept the card in the dashboard of her scooter and reached the college to finish her exams. She did her exams well and waiting for the final result. After graduation, she wanted to hire studies, especially MBA. So she prepared to coach herself. Her parents suggested to join the coaching center. She thought it would be a good idea. In the next few days, she joined the coaching session and started to attend in the morning. In the meantime, she forgot the visiting card the man gave her. While searching for a pocket notebook, she saw the card lying in the corner of the bag. That day, the man told her his mother is battling for life. So she was eager to know the fate of his mother. Reluctantly, she took the phone and called the number printed in the card. He took the phone and replied that still she is in critical condition. She said sorry and disconnected the phone. After a few days, her phone rang, and she took and replied the same guy was on the phone and asking for a favor. He said he is waiting in the main road, wanted to go to hospital urgently, so if time permits, she could drop him in the hospital. She said, okay, I am on the way to my coaching center. It is next to the hospital only. As told, this time also she dropped him there. On the moving scooter, his shoulder rubbed her back, two or three time when she slowed down to climb speed breaker. It was a new experience for her because no third person ever touched her. His closeness made her feel high. She didn't know that she was attracted to him. Now daily she started to speak to him for no reason. They met regularly, exchanged pleasantry, some common topics. He is very intelligent. He covered any topic she is interested in the meantime, his mother expired, and she wanted to attend the funeral, for which he said he is taking the body to his native place near a hill station which is a bit far away, and which has proper transport so need not come. I accept your condolences, he said. What he said was, seems to be okay. So she said, go ahead. After that, he was missing for a long time, and could not be reached by phone also. She is longing to meet him. She felt she miss him very badly. She was lonely, because her parents died in an accident recently. So she wanted to share her feelings with someone. This incident made her to feel that she is love with him, but she had a big dream to get married to a elite person. So she is curious to know about the status of this man. After two months, he contacted her and told that he is in town. She, in turn, told him about her parents' death and also wanted to know his status. He asked for what purpose, 
and she replied that she is looking for a good alliance. If he will be to her expectations, she wanted to marry him, since she can't be alone. He said he did his post-graduation in M.A. politics and working as a freelancer. He showed her some credentials about his work and told her he is in the process of starting his own startup and arranging funds by selling his ancestral property. It is getting delayed since his mother expired. In the meantime, he applied for a bank loan also, which is also in the process. Even if she agree to marry him, he said it will take place only after his project goes live. This was his final decision, Sheila thought. Anyway, it will happen in near future. Hoping so, she developed more intimacy towards him and became very close. She is ready to live with him. Even today, she is ready to move into his dwelling place. Don't know why she is crazy on him, though he clearly told about his future. She thought only he can be right, bridegroom. When she is in this process, since her parents died in a car accident, the other distant-related family members advised her not to hurry for her marriage until her parents' death anniversary, but she didn't heed to anybody. She started to live with him as live in partner. Third month, she became pregnant. One midnight, police knocked their flat to open. Police arrested him, since he is the most wanted criminal in bomb blast case. She cried, begged. Nothing happened. The case trial went for many years, court convicted to death penalty, since the crime he committed was heinous. Today's situation, warranted by herself, she didn't heed to anybody. Her mind was blindfolded on this man. She didn't want to check his whereabouts nor his previous records properly. The passion he showed on her was so strong, and she couldn't have a second thought. Now it is too late. 